Listen, I'm headed your way March 31st to April 2nd. Get your tickets at ryansickler.com. Let's get this tea party started. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Uh, look, I just want to say thank you. I say it every week and I mean it. Every time I say it, thank you for the messages. Thank you for the love. Um, you're changing my life too, all right? You want to change it even more? Hit that subscribe on the YouTube, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's a free way to help the podcast, all right? Um, if you got to have more honeydew, then you got to check out the Patreon. It's every Thursday. You're getting a honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost. It's five bucks. If you're in for the long haul, sign up for a year. You're getting over a month free. All right. The stories are wild. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. The honeydew with y'all, y'all. All right. Now, um, get your tickets for all my tour dates at ryansickler.com. So, you know what we do over here? We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. I'm very excited to have this guest first time here on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the Honeydew. Girl. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. I know you've been patiently waiting out there, but I've been patiently waiting because I'm telling you, I've been a fan for a long time. I've been watching what you guys do. Not only is as comedians, but as as business women out there, and you guys Thanks. fucking made some real goddamn moves. So Thanks. congrats to you. Yeah, on that. appreciate that. Um, please, before we get into what we're gonna get into, um, yeah, will you, got the tissues ready. <laughs> on deck. Uh, will you plug promote everything? Yeah, absolutely. Our special day is the debut stand up comedy special of myself and Corinne Fisher. We self produced it. Corinne directed it, and it is available to watch for free on youtubecom slash guys we fucked without the you and fucked, um, which is also our social media handles. I got I'm at Christina Hutch on all platforms, and um, yeah, should I do tour dates? Or yeah, a, throw it all. I'm gonna out be there. May 12th in uh, London, uh, May 13th in Dublin, and uh, oh, April 9th. That's out of order, but I'll be in Miami for a Bitcoin conference. Really? And I get paid partially in Bitcoin. I haven't so. I haven't dived in yet. It's it's all right. I yeah. I I did early and then I pulled out because I made ten thousand dollars and I was like I'm a millionaire. Um, but if I would have kept that in for three more years, I would have been a hundred millionaire. So you know you live and you learn. See, I just my thing is like you could collect all that, but if you don't have somebody to buy it, you don't get the money, right? Uh, I don't think it, it, when you sell it, it's a, it's like a stock, so you right. sell it whenever you want. It but just depends at, on the price. But somebody's got to buy it. I don't think so. To give you cash, right? I don't think so. No, no. I've sold because when I sold it, it you just didn't get cash. Instantly went to my bank, the money. But U.S. dollars. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what I mean. I, I'm sorry. When I'm saying cash, I mean American U.S. dollars. Oh yeah. So yep. someone's got to trade you U.S. dollars for your Bitcoin, obviously, to cash it out. Yeah. And I and guess it's a mystery what, who that is. Right. It's and just I some guess guy. the government, everybody's waiting for the government to go, oh, you you have $100 million? We think that's worth $3. Right. Yeah. And right. then you're fucked. But when it transfers to your Chase yeah, account. Yeah, but if you can get it, that's what I'm saying. If you get it now, get it. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I'm very excited to have you sit here because your email came in too, and you have something that's been going on. Uh, we've had a few um, conversations lately about suicide and things yeah. like that, um, which is common. always, it's always, a, yeah, unfortunately. And- um, you had said your mom, but before yeah. we get to that, just tell me a little bit about your background. Like, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Yeah, so I, gr I spent a lot of my childhood in um, Chesapeake, Virginia, because my dad was in the Navy, and uh, from age two to ten, mom was very mentally ill. Uh, no one talked about it. She would do. I, w I have an older brother who eight years older than me. Very, I, who I'm very, very close with. Thank God I have him. I feel like I'm war, war buddies. Um, <laughs> we've been in the trenches I of my you, my yeah, home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's very important that I have somebody else yeah. <laughs> who's experienced this. Um, it was 
one of those things where when you grow up in the environment you grow up and you think that's what everybody has. Like, you don't you don't know that it's different, but you're like, I'm pretty sure this sucks. Uh, but I was very imaginative and very um, – I would just get lost in my imagination. So I spent a lot of time alone playing. Uh, but yeah, mom was very mentally ill. There was one period where she lived in a car. Um, and While she, married to your dad? Yeah. Uh, we had a house built in Virginia. Okay. And uh, then we moved into it. And then um, there was, yeah, it was very confusing. So we lived in there for and a couple years into living there. I was maybe four. Uh, she lived in a car. And I was like, where's... Where? Mom. Outside or I like it, by another the, I think she location. drove to the beach. She drove to another location. And, and had she a would, house. We had a giant house. A beautiful I, I just I remember like as a kid, I appreciated how beautiful our house was. I really did. And uh she would my brother told me this recently. She would sneak into the house. We one time we were out to eat. We would always go to Old Country Buffet. Uh it was me, my brother, and my dad. And we were coming back. And we were pulling into the garage, and my mom was in the garage, and I, I was in, like, a car seat in the back, so I was, like, I couldn't tell. But my, I heard my brother, like, Mom? She went into the garage to steal my brother's rollerblades so she could sell them at a flea market and buy him a birthday present. <laughs> Because a couple a days one. later, there was like a like a phone. She brought him like a landline phone, like one of the see through ones with all the colored things. And he's like, "I wanted those rollerblades. <laughs> Fuck this I don't phone. want a phone." Yeah. <laughs> so that shit would happen. Um, but what do you like? Okay, well that's obvious. There's something wrong there. Yeah, but what, I'm a little kid, so right. I'm like, "Ooh, mom's back. Ooh, mom's and going." Okay. Dad's not talking much about it with you guys because no. you're, li- you're little. Don't you don't wish know. they would have treated us more like adults <sighs> then? Because even though it fuck us up, it at least make more sense in the Some, end when we yes. go to work on it. Right. Cause yeah. cause what a kid does, I've learned I've I've read this book called The Body Keeps the Score that changed me. Um basically about how trauma lives in your body. And so uh the author talks about PTSD in, in veterans, but uh it also is pr- similar in kids who experience adverse childhood experiences, which is what they're called technically. Um, and there's like a long list of them. And you can fuck your kid up very easily. I mean, you could you could look at them weird and it fucks them up. Like it's not not just one time, <laughs> yeah, but you know, right. consistently yeah. looking at them without a smile, without a happy face, will fuck up a kid's psyche. Um, and so, so yeah, no one talked about it. She hallucinated a lot on medications because the doctors put her on a lot of medications. They weren't listening to her when she said that they weren't working and they were making her things worse. They're like, yeah, just give it a couple more, uh, you know, months. And yeah, she was always. Um, Par- like her emotions were always paramount. Like we kind of bowed down and looked to her of like, can we do this? Is this okay? Like, should we go out to eat? Is mom okay? Well, if mom's not okay, we'll just stay home and eat, you know, peanut butter and butter sandwiches. But we ate that a lot. Healthy diet. Peanut butter and butter? I've yeah. never had that. Yeah. Country I've crock had honey, butter. Jelly. Oh, I had the country crock spread for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then you recycle that tub too. Oh, you don't yeah. you don't throw that tub nope, away. That nope. was you keep that tub for leftovers. Was, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> or a sandbox. Make sandcastle. <laughs> So what kind of what memories of your mom do you have that were positive? Like was oh, she a, was she was she She wanted to she be was, a good mom. She okay, so she was she wanted crazy, it. but she wasn't a bad person. Well, it's it, no no, she's not a bad person for okay. sure. But uh it's it's so many layers. Oh, so many layers. Uh she wanted to like she dressed me up a lot. She always wanted a little girl. And my brother and I were eight years apart. She had a lot of miscarriages um, before she had me. And there was one instance, she she told me this, where uh, she had to get rushed to the hospital when she was about seven months pregnant. And there was there had been a giant tumor in the womb with me um, that they, they got on the scan about four months into her pregnancy with me. And so they were monitoring it. And then about seven months in, they had to rush her to the hospital because she was bleeding. And While you're in her belly? Yeah. Holy and, shit. And they took a scan and everything was fine and the tumor was gone. So I'm like, I probably ate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Helping my mom from that. the womb. Because <laughs> I, I, what happens is when you have a parent with depression, you, and I'm a sensitive kid. I think I, think I would have been born sensitive either way. You, you only focus on their needs because 
and this is something I've learned in, in therapy. My therapist is a trauma specialist. Mm -hmm. She said when, when, when a, a, a child's nervous system cannot handle the fact that a parent can't take care of them or a parent doesn't want to take care of them. And so because a child will die. There's a lot. There's been a lot of studies on this. There was a famous World War II study where in orphanages, um, all the babies that got food, clothing, diaper changes, but not all of them were held by nurses because there wasn't enough staff. The babies that weren't held died, even though they got even everything they, they got needed. The care. They wow. needed touch. So he, that's how sensitive we are. Skin on skin. I remember skin on skin. Skin on skin. But they all, there's also another really important thing where for the child's emotional health, the child needs to experience their parent ha being joyful just because the kid is happy. Like it, uh, she worded it uh, much better than this. But like basically the child needs to experience their their parent really just loving them just because they exist like that's it I, I say it all the time like your fucking bullshit trip to europe and a hit, i want to go here and turks and K none of that fucking matters nope. all that matters is that you love hard you show up and at least at least act like you're genuinely interested in what the fuck they're doing that's <laughs> and ask, all you gotta and be inquisitive do. Yeah, and nurture talk nurture to their them, spirit learn your fucking kid they grow yeah nurture they their spirit yeah 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 uh, and so the ch my child was very – I didn't know what mom I was going to get because the medications fucked her up. That's Her bipolar fucked her so up. So you're always wondering was, who's coming. Who's coming down the stairs. Right. So I like – my therapist said she's, she put it in a way that I was like that's very – that feels very like a good metaphor. She's like both your antennas were pointed towards your mom. Not one was pointed towards you. Like usually a kid – a kid has an ego, especially a baby. They they're, they think they're the only person that exists and then whoever's in front of them, right? So um, – so that's that's you know until they grow out of that phase they need to be like really nurtured and loved, um, and I was certainly my mom wanted kids so bad and so and she wanted a girl and I was you know eight years after my brother and there was a lot of um, a lot of health scares when I was born so I think I was born into this. Um, She's so fearful, my mom, that something bad is going to happen to all of us, and so I think with me it was just. Like she didn't want – I was just this precious thing that she wanted to keep in an incubator and not like learn from my own mistakes as I grew older. Like that's the form it would take as I got older. Um, and so, yeah, it was – It was. I didn't know it was weird, but uh, – But not as abusive. An adult, I, when I say abusive, physical or uh, – Yeah, I got hit a lot. You did uh, by her? Mm-hmm. She would take her anger out on me. Really? Uh, she would brush my hair when she was, uh, and I would cry because I have really thick curly hair. Yeah. She didn't, and she has curly hair too, but she didn't really know how to brush it. And so she would just kind of yank it when she was in a bad mood and I would cry and I would say stop and she would get mad at me for crying. And I'm like, this is, so it was a lot of that. So uh, I grew up kind of, I don't know, just not knowing who I was. <laughs> This is what I need to do with Ryan Sickler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I even turned the camera for it. I appreciate it. <laughs> I genuinely appreciate it. You're welcome. I'll probably do that a couple more times. You'll get, you'll get a lot of variations of promo. You pull if you uh -huh. need to. Yeah. We should get honeydew tissues. I should just get a, a, a cup. <laughs> and then I'll drink it after. <laughs> Okay, so you grow up not knowing not only who you are, but who who mom's going to be uh -huh. day to day. Yeah, and my dad was just. That's a lot of anxiety. That's a lot of anxiety uh, for an adult to uh -huh. be a child. So now you're also having to parent yep. as a kid. And get this. Oh, God. I spent. So my dad retired from the Navy when I was about five. He got drafted. He retired as a chief. Very He, he excelled in the Navy. And. um. When he retired, he did all these weird jobs. And I was so – I was a kid, so I didn't know I, – I was like, this feels fucked up. But I didn't have the vernacular to say anything because I didn't know how to, you know, really relate to people yet. But my dad cleaned parking lots uh, with, like, a street sweeper. He worked at Domino's Pizza. He got held up at gunpoint, like, several times. For real? Like, like delivery? Up. Yeah. I'm like, you were a chief in the <laughs> Navy. <laughs> no one would ever. Repairing jet planes <laughs> on an aircraft carrier in Taiwan. And now you're working at Domino's? Don't you want to, like, aim higher? Not that Domino's is bad, but you, you're 40. Who's aim high? That's the Air Force. He's the wrong, he's yeah, the wrong true. motherfucking yeah, branch true. of the military. That's true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was confusing. So he just started doing, like, odd he jobs? And then he and started shit? a business where he was advising high school kids on college. He never went to college. <laughs> 
And I was like, this feels like not a good idea, but I don't want to say anything because they're my parents, so I guess they know. Um, and then, and then they got to the flea markets. And I grew up a lot in flea markets. Okay, I gotta I'm gonna stop you there and just so the whole time though, dad and mom are together. Mm -hmm. I know she's leaving and doing her thing, but dad's there and they're a married. That's not couple. emotionally there, but yes, they yes. are married okay. and living in the same. And house. he tolerates this, and they screamed at each other all. Okay, they did argue the fucking time. Oh, okay, yeah, screamed yeah. like I would be at friends' houses, and they the parents like my our next door neighbors would invite my parents over for dinner because they had a son around my age, and I was like best friends with him. And uh, they would be having dinner, and then I would be playing with Stephen and upstairs, and then my mom and dad just start fighting, and the other couple is like, "Okay, ha ha, you guys can go over to your house and do the." And they didn't even like no one else existed. They were just screaming at each other. They didn't they didn't take have the wherewithal to take a step back and go. I'm at someone's house for dinner. Right. No, I'm not even in my own home. Maybe I should zip it. Zip it. Nope. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. Yeah, and then the flea markets came into so my life. tell me about those. We would have to dig through my neighbor's trash, uh, trash. and go junking to for antiques to sell at a flea market. It was very embarrassing. Junking. That was my mama called <laughs> going I junking. Your parent putting that shit on it. Yep. Yeah. They bought a really <laughs> shitty van that was moments away from falling apart. Uh, and we would take it around the neighborhoods in the middle of the night and Where you dig live? through people's trash. Yeah. But these are. We found should... some good shit, honestly. I, so I, I was like, all right, it. well. I believe people it. People throw some nice things away. I was here after the, right after the Northridge quake in 94 when I was going to college. And um, man, people in Beverly Hills throw some good shit away. Just put it right out on the oh, street. Oh, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Damn, think I want to do that, that tonight. That's what I'm saying. They just Wait, throw what's trash They night? put it in. Well, Beverly Hills don't leave it out anymore. Uh, but after the earthquake, they were just like, get this broken shit or this shit out of here. It was a set. These, uh, I mean, you were like, God damn, people were going all over taking wow, shit. Mm -hmm. Damn. They could have sold that for a lot of money. But now, too, I hear that it's hard to rent a U-Haul. So many people are leaving, but other people are renting them around here because people just want to get the fuck out. They're not even selling their shit. They're just throwing <laughs> their couches and stuff on the curb. And these yeah. people are going all over the valley and snagging up all this stuff. That's great. Yeah. Hey, cool. You'd that's, be doing that right now. That, that's what I would have been. Now, I've been to the flea markets. I have... Um, so they're special place, especially in Virginia. So the Pasadena Rose Bowl does, it used to be, it probably still do it, the second Sunday of every month, they would have a monster flea market in the parking lot around the Rose Bowl. It's just huge. Nice. Rose Bowl sits a, seats 100,000. It's Damn. It's massive. Yeah. So Tables as far as the eye can see. Yeah. But it's been four or five times now where I've gone and taken my shit. Basically, I'm having a yard sale at the Rose Bowl. Right. But when I got there, what I didn't realize is like this guy next to me got a sign. All belts. Oh, <laughs> that you know he what like I mean? made all and like shoes. Right. All denim yeah. over here. Like all leather it. over here. Like these and these are businesses Ryan's around me. <laughs> I'm over there like I got a five dollar. Like it, you know, and shit like that. But I sell, VHS I tape, sell everything. Buddy? I sell the table I bring shit on. And if I don't, I hit Goodwill on the way out, yeah, donate, yeah. and I'm gone. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. We would do that. So we would we would take our – so when I got a, a couple years older, like six, seven, uh, we would go. And then she would bid on junk piles. Tr go. We would go to auctions and so bid on piles of junk from Porter's it? house. <laughs> and sell it or is yes. this to decorate so, your home? No. Okay. So, well, it ended up in our home. So what would happen is we would bid on a junk pile. Truly, it was a like pile. the size of this room. Okay. A pile, maybe up to the ceiling. It was just me and my mom. We would go there and she would bid. I'm six. And then after that, we have to sort through it because not all the stuff is good. So we had to spend hours sorting through it and we put it all in the van and then we took it from the van to the to the living room and we were never allowed to have people over because I was like, mom, can my friend sleep over? And she's like, no, the living, everything's a mess. Like you couldn't even see the floor of our home really? at, at one point. Yeah. I was like it was that. covered in shit. And I was like, but you, can we, I don't care. I didn't care, but my mom did. And I'm like, well, then why is there, um, like, can you clean it up then? Like, I'm not trying to be a bitch here. <laughs> um, but uh, I never voiced my needs ever. I never stood up to myself because I was so scared of her. And I was, I felt bad for her. And I felt like I didn't exist, only she existed. So I, I, I didn't, even at the time I was like, okay, I guess I'll just sleep over my friend's house. Like I didn't, you know, fight back. Um, and yeah, so, um, and then we would go to Bill's flea market in, Ch in Virginia beach and we would take the van and she would set up a table and she had severe depression and she was on a lot of medications. She slept all the time. So she would price things, not everything, put it on a table and I, we would just sit there and then she would go in the van and fall asleep. And be in a depression coma or while a medication the, while coma. While the sales going, while the people well, are walking up. Yes. And I 
at six had to negotiate with these yeah. white trash, alcoholic, toothless, probably molesters. Probably. On antiques. And then I would wake my mom. I would go to wake my mom. She slept so deeply when she napped and she snored so loud. And I would have to shake her. I would have physically shake. And she would yell at me for waking her up. And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. There's this guy here that wants to buy this thing and he wants to offer you $10 and you put 12 to I don't. And so, but I had a good attitude about it because I was just like, I got to help my mom. She also told me um, she was sore all the time. Her shoulders and neck were always sore. And she would ask me to massage them. And I would. I would massage her shoulders. And then one day she said to me, you know, the longer you sh massage mommy's shoulders, the longer she'll live. And I was like, <sighs> you remember oh, that, your life is in my hands. <laughs> Literally, I have the power to keep you alive. I need to, you know, go. That's heavy. Yep. Yep. Uh, so a lot of flea. And then they went from flea market to a toy store. They bought a store. They rented a storefront. What do you mean a storefront? They like, rented a store in a parking center, uh, in a shopping strip center. Strip mall thing? Yeah. And made they it a They called it Toy, toy Connection. And it was toys from all decades that we got in the junk places. Um, they would order some wholesale. And it was just like, guys, you don't, okay, whatever. And it, it's just for years, our house was covered in shit. Uh, and my mom was in and out of, you know, depression and mental illness and all of this. And then- um, is it paying the bills en enough? Like, I think. Tell me about. Are you? What are you? Middle class? Lower? So we were lower middle class. We were. We were. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 You know, we had a. We had a house. Yeah. Right. Not a great one. We were but middle it was class, a house. I would say. Yeah. Although my parents always stressed about money openly to us, which was awful. Um, and I think this. They were just. I, I've I've starting to uncover a lot because I ended up cutting my parents off. I don't speak to them anymore, which is really? a huge thing for me. Uh, but uh, they would allude to being stressed. They would like push their financial stress onto us. And they knew I was a sensitive kid and I cared a lot and I was just worried all the time about everything. So it was like they would give me things to worry about and kind of keep me here. Um, but I think that he was a chief in the Navy. My mom was on disability. She didn't work. She couldn't. She had... Physical dis some physical disabilities you wouldn't know looking at her, but um she had a lot of learn she had learning disabilities. Uh, she was always always how in special your, classes. How did your school. mom and dad meet? <sighs> in Florida, they're both from New Jersey. <laughs> they're both from the same town in New Starts Jersey. In Florida, okay. They met in Florida. My mom's eighteen. She was escaping an abusive boyfriend. Uh, her her mother flew her down to Florida to stay with her aunt uh, to escape this guy who they, she thought was going to kill him. And she's on the beach with her girlfriend. She took her girlfriend. And um, she was lying on the beach in Florida. And my mom had driven my, my her aunt's car there. It was a stick shift. Um, and while she was on the beach, she could sleep on the beach. You could also have cars on the beach at that time. Uh, a giant truck ran backed into her while she was asleep on the beach, ran over her arm and leg, and ran into her neck. But because she was on the sand, she sunk down. This freaked her out so badly, she didn't go to the hospital. She just went back to her aunt's house and was just, like, shaking. She should have been, like, her... It fucked her up, but yeah. she, she was able to walk and stuff after. The next day, with tire tracks on her hands, she was at a pool ta uh, pool hall, and the owner of the pool hall was like, oh, Nancy, you're from New Jersey, right? Meet Ed. He's also from New Jersey. I think he's from the same town. And my dad was like... Who, what happened to you? You look like you got ran over by a truck. And she's like, actually, I did. And then the rest is is history. She, they found out that, <laughs> that they found out love, that love. my mom's mom was my dad's Sunday school teacher. They're they're wow. nine years apart. They're nine years apart. They okay. met in Florida. So it was a cool and so she very quickly moved in with him. She just moved all of her stuff and moved in. And then they had my brother. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh yeah, it was looking back at it, I feel like it was pretty codependent love but I, that word didn't even wasn't even in the vernacular at that time so yeah yeah uh and so yeah the flea markets um so much happened um then my parents separated my mom took me out to an ihop um which was my favorite restaurant we never like went we always went to buffets because they were so cheap we didn't go so when we shook me to ihop i was so excited but it was to tell me that her and my dad were separating nah. <laughs> And she, I remember she was like, you can get whatever you want. And I was like, can I get chocolate chip pancakes? And she was, right, except for our marriage, your parents being together. Um, you can't get that. Um, but even if we were together, we'd make your life hell. So it's hell either way. Uh, and she was bawling, bawling. At, at, I or, she you? let me order chocolate chip pancakes. And I was like, what? Cool. And then we ordered and we were sitting there and she was like, I was about eight. Okay. Nine. Um, and then she starts crying 
And she's like, your father and I are separating. Do you want to live with him or me? You have to pick one. And I was like, what? And then the waitress was like, here's your <laughs> here's pancakes. And pancake. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and I, I still crave chocolate chip pancakes to this day. And I think it's like my, my it's my cutting. Yeah. <laughs> it's my cutting. It's my cutting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so they separated for three years and I moved to Pennsylvania. Um, and I. Okay. So wait, th- you moved to Pennsylvania with who? With my mom. Okay. And dad stays in Virginia. Yep. He stays there. Okay. So that's a little bit of difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How many He's, hours are we looking from where she's in uh, Pennsylvania? Because Pennsylvania like is big as yeah, shit. Yeah. 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 It's about a seven, eight hour drive. Damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it's significant. Um, and the last, your, do you remember how your dad feels about this? Yeah. So the last night, my dad, uh, doesn't not comfortable talking about emotions very yeah. you know military also very and we were yeah. raised very militaristically yeah. uh, in in some respects um the last night at my dad's house i didn't want to stay with him i stayed at my best friend katie's house uh and i remember feeling so guilty and i called him the next morning because he had left for work so i wasn't gonna see him like before like before i got picked up to go to pennsylvania and that was the only time i ever heard him cry and oh, i was like oh. <laughs> so yeah this is the honeydew with Ryan Sickler. <laughs> yeah. So that was the only time I've ever heard him. And he ever. was bawling like he a was, baby. Huh? Like oh, a baby. Man, you're about to make me cry thinking of my daughter leaving. Yeah. Good Lord. And I was like, oh, I, I thought he was crying because I, I thought he was crying because I didn't spend that last night with him because mm-hmm. I didn't understand. And so I felt guilty about that. <sighs> for so long I felt guilty about everything but uh that one that one ate me up for a while lived with my mom uh we cleaned houses for a living we lived in like a condo we went from this like beautiful house to a to a two-bedroom condo did your Um, brother go as well no he stayed with my he was in college at that point so he just went to college in Richmond Richmond uh and then my mom and I cleaned houses um while uh and um she we clean houses to pay for my braces, and she reminded me of that uh, every day. Um, <laughs> that she bent over backwards to pay for my braces. Yeah. Meanwhile, like too depressed to pick me up from play practice, I was always the last kid every time. Always the last kid to get picked up because she was slept all the time, um, and so it would just be me and uh, the fucking security guard at the school. We like bonded hardcore. Uh, um, every every fucking thing extracurricular activity, I did not get picked up. Like she, had, I had to wait. Um, hours and then she got mad at me i'm like i don't know what you want here lady listen if you're out there looking for a home the truth is that house prices are only going to continue to skyrocket the time to start planning is now and i recommend that everyone listen to the how to buy a home podcast it's an incredible free resource with everything you need to know to navigate this process host david sedoni is an industry expert with years of experience who actually cares about first-time home buyers just like you. He answers questions like, when is the best time to start? How do I even start? Will a mortgage be more than my current monthly rent? Probably not. The good news is he just released an emergency episode of How to Buy a Home, all about the bidding wars of 2022 with insider tips and tricks to win. David has helped make buying a home a reality for so many people. And I know the reason you keep hearing David come back here is because you guys are listening and using his services. And some of you have already bought your first home. You guys are commenting on YouTube. You're throwing it up on the social. So I know it's working. So if you're interested, I'm telling you right now, he can help you no matter what stage you're in and even connect you with a great realtor in your area. All right. Listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast today. David can help find How to Buy a Home wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have multiple credit card balances each month and are only paying the minimums like I did for years, barely making a dent in your credit card debt, it can be discouraging. Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly so you can feel like you're finally getting ahead. Whether it's paying off your credit cards or consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. And you can check your rate without impacting your credit score in just five minutes for loans between a thousand all the way up to fifty thousand dollars. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. 
Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash honeydew. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, your income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash honeydew. You guys know I'm a big believer in mental health. I think that people are out there working out their bodies and not their minds enough. And this is a mental health show. So learning to manage daily stress and anxious thoughts is something we all want, but many of us don't even know where to begin. And New Mood is here to guide you to mental wellness and give you the tools you need to tackle stress so you'll feel empowered to take on whatever life throws at you. I already started doing therapy again. I went back to therapy yesterday, as a matter of fact. And I just think it's a great thing for everyone, all right? Um, And New Mood has a team of dedicated coaches, so you have a support system helping you. My favorite thing about it is that it's literally a step-by-step guide to help you manage your mental wellness, and you can do it at your own pace. You can arm yourself with knowledge and the skills for happiness, and they'll help you better understand your personal relationship with stress and anxious thoughts so you can take control, build resilience, and develop coping mechanisms that actually work. All you need is 10 minutes a day, and it's an app, so it's there for you anytime, anywhere. Worry less and feel happier. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash honeydew. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash honeydew. Start your trial today. Now, let's get back to the do. So moving on to the, the suicide attempt, my parents get back together. They do. Yeah. My dad sends her books of poetry. That he's writing? No, okay. thank God. Still, I don't think they would have gotten back together. It's a big jump for a guy that doesn't, doesn't even have address feelings. feelings. Yeah. yeah. Sends her books of poetry. I'm like, whoa. It comes up to visit. Very gradual, but they come up to visit. And so we end up three years. I was in Pennsylvania three years with just my mom. And How often are you seeing your dad in that time? Once or twice a year. Okay. And, but he, yeah, and uh, they got back together. We bought a house in Pennsylvania. Okay, so he moved up there. Yeah, yeah. High school starts. At first, they weren't fighting because they were separated for so long. And then they started back up again. And, uh, but I I didn't, I don't know. I didn't really, I was a good kid in high school. I was very scared to break the rules because I was scared of being a bad daughter. Like, that was, that was like my main concern. And so the night before I moved away to college, I was going to Penn State, main campus. I was living with a, a girl I was really close friends with. I was so excited. This was my first experience with like autonomy, really. And and, and because my my parents were so, or my mom mo- ma- um, mainly, was so concerned with my safety at all times, even though I wasn't doing high risk activities. She was always worried about me. If, if a friend that I had, she heard a friend curse, she would get so mad. Like, why are you friends with this person? They're bad. They're bad. They're a bad person. Blah. She would just pressure me and criticize me all the goddamn time. Um, and so, and it was sometimes it would come in spurts just out of nowhere. And so this last day before I moved away to college, she was taking me shopping for my dorm room. And I was over the moon excited. We were at Walmart getting a microwave and she was just in the sourest mood, but I was so excited that I was like, you can't, nothing you could do can ruin this for me. Um, and she started yelling at me at a Walmart and I, I was, I was confused as to why she would yell at me all the time for like things that I didn't necessarily do. And so she starts yelling at me that I'm selfish or something. And she leaves me in the Walmart. She just leaves. And I had to call my dad to pick me up. That was the no, second time that like happened. Like drove away. Yep. Not she was like, away, I can't like, take you, Christina. Left, you're right. ungrateful. You're blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she she's like, I'm leaving. Your father can come pick you up. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. I still got to buy this microwave because I told Liz I'd buy the microwave. So like uh, we got, you know, and uh, that was the second time that happened. The first time that happened, I was 16 out at a restaurant with my mom, my my dad's mom, my grandmother, who had a stroke. So she had the mentality of a five-year-old. She would pick, she would take her dentures out and just lick them all the time. Fucking, lick them. Yeah. She would pick things off of people's plates as she walked through a restaurant. She would go, what? I wanted it. I'm like, <laughs> you can't do that. She was a bitch. Um, and, uh, sorry. And, um, and it was me, my mom, my grandmother, who had a stroke, and my brother's girlfriend. And, and in that, I was 16 years old. And, uh, and very vividly, I remember my mom bringing up uh, a friend's daughter who moved to New York City, and she was alluding that she was having sex. She was alluding that this she was being slutty. 
And my mom turned to me. I had a boyfriend at the time, my very first boyfriend that I was madly in love with. He was cheating on me the whole time, but I didn't know yet. <laughs> I lost my virginity to him. And at before this conversation yep, or after? Okay. Before. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's where I was at. She was telling me about her friend, his daughter moved to New York City and was being a slut. And she was like, you wouldn't, you haven't done any of that stuff. Right, Christina? And I, I would never lie to my mom because I always told her the truth, which was a mistake. And I was like, well, I have actually. She got up, like did one of these, <laughs> marched out of the restaurant. And I was like, and it was me, my grandmother and my brother's girlfriend and i was like i guess we gotta call my dad she left to pick she fucking left yeah <laughs> All of you. and i remember i was so <laughs> i was like that shaking because yeah. she was so mad at me yeah. the last thing i wanted was my mom mad at me and <laughs> she was trying to be a good daughter mad God at me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was like, what did I do? Like, what? <laughs> and I remember it was snowy that night. It was like snowy. And then when, when we eventually got home, my grandmother, while we were walking out of the restaurant, kept taking things off of people's plates. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm right. bawling I my eyes out. I was like, Stop, ah, you can't do that, grandma. She's like, don't yell at me. I'm like, I just want to get out of this restaurant. <laughs> and then we were, when we got home, oh, my mom shit. was already home. And my grandma fell on the sidewalk. She fell, slipped on ice because I couldn't fucking carry her. Yeah. She was gigantic. And then my bro and then I fell, and she starts crying. She's like, "Nobody loves me." Like she acted like a kid. Th this woman. It was just. It was awful. My mom didn't talk to me for weeks. So fast forward the night before I moved away to college. <laughs> We're in Walmart, part two, but there was, she did. You know, it wasn't because I was a slut. It was just because uh, I don't. Who knows at this point? Um, she got mad at me, left Walmart. I had to call my dad, and at that point, I was like, "I've had it with that." <laughs> that was my big "fuck you" um, kind of expression, and I was mad. I was telling my dad, "I'm like, why does she do this?" And she, my dad, was always like, eh, "She's your. It's your mom. Like, don't don't worry about it. Like, just make sure she's okay." Like, my dad fed this whole narrative of like. You let your mom do what she's going to do. She's sick. It's fine. Um, without ever asking us, how does this make you feel? Right. Um, and so my dad picked me up from the Walmart. And we pulled into our house. Because I still had to pack all my stuff for to move away to college the next day. And half of it was packed. Half of it wasn't. As we pull up, my mom is walking down the street of our neighborhood with a, with a, with a giant beer glass filled with vodka. And we, I get out of the car and I'm like, mom? She's like, don't talk to me. And I was like, okay, all right, whatever. Uh, in my head, I was like, whatever, bitch, okay. Um, and it was weird. It was off color for her because she doesn't usually drink. She didn't drink a lot. And uh, she walked away and I was like, whatever. And then so I'm packing, I'm loading things in the van. I'm still like, nothing's gonna ruin this. I'm so excited. And hours go by and it's like 1 a.m. And she's not back. And we're like, that's, that's weird, right? And I was like, dad, we should, should we call the cops? He's like, I think so. And I was like, okay, let's call the cops. So we called the cops. Uh, um, my dad talked to him. And then two of them rolls by. And we're like, ah, this is, this is weird. Like, where is she? And she, she had a, um, you know, she had a huge beverage, alcoholic beverage on her. So I'm like, I, is she drunk, passed out somewhere? I don't, I don't know. Um, this had never happened before. And so we finally, a phone, we get a phone call. And it's a family friend. And... It's this guy, and he was like, "Hey, um, I have your mother on the other line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect all the calls. Don't say anything because if she knows you're on the other line, she's gonna hang up." Based off of the conversation I've had with her so far, we're like, "Okay." So my dad's on the, my dad has the phone upstairs. I am on the phone, you know, the landline. Remember when you could do that? Yeah, yeah, two people on the same mm -hmm. call, um, on one side, um, and then she start. So they, he patches us all through, and she is obliterated. I've never seen her drunk, and um. And then uh, she mentions she's at the train tracks by her house. And I was like, oh, that's okay. I'm thinking of like an old timey cartoon of like some old fucking drunk with a sack um, sitting by the train tracks. And I, I was like, that's weird. I was like, and I was in my head, I'm like, well, come home. And, uh, and then she starts talking about how um, she needs to leave the earth. She, she, start, she talks about killing herself. And then I'm like, mom, 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 whoa, 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 what? Hi, it's me, it's Christina. And she's like, Christina? I'm like, yes, hi, mom. Like, D please don't do, where are you? We're like, where are you? And um, and I heard the train. Oh, shit. And then she's like, she's like, you, you don't need me anymore. You have your father. You don't, you know, I'm just a burden in your life. And I was like, no, you're not, mom, you're not. Like, I need, please don't 
jump. And she's she I forget what she was saying. She was like being very nonsensical. But that she got out and I heard the train and I thought she died. Like I thought I just heard her die. And so I screamed and I threw the phone and I knew I knew where she was. Uh, Because I knew the pathway to get to the tracks. There was only a couple. So I ran. My dad called 911. And I was like, I'm about to see my mom, like, her guts everywhere. I don't know. She slipped and hit her head. She tried to jump and she slipped. She really did try, though. Yeah. She was on the rocks. So so half of the track was like a cliff almost. And then half of it was like yardage, you know, grass. Uh, She had slipped. So I found her. uh, Knocked out? Knocked out. She was bleeding from her head. And there was the ambulance was already there. Thank God. Thank God I wasn't the one who um, arrived at the scene first. <laughs> but I ran. I booked Jesus it. Jesus. And I sat Christ. in the I sat in the back of the ambulance holding her hand, and and she was just telling me how she doesn't want to be alive. She wants to die. All this stuff. And then uh, we went to the hospital. I sat with her. They patched her up. She didn't have an injury or anything. There was no head injury. Thank God, which was a miracle. And then the next day, I moved to Penn State. <laughs> Mitt me lions, here we come. <laughs> I feel like God held Holy out the paterno shit. shit until after I left Penn State so I could have some fucking yeah, fun. Good point. So I can enjoy the Penn State yeah, college campus life. Too much. I feel it like Sandusky, they, that was they're like, we need to pause this reveal. Sorry, all the people that are gonna get molested for it. Uh because Christina needs to have some fun in her life. Man, uh, yeah. that's day one at college. Day huh? one. Mm. And didn't tell I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody what Shit. happened. Shit. Because I'm, now I'm a fucking open book. I'll fucking tell a stranger what happened. But your email, and we, we bullet pointed up there, uh, has an S next to suicide attempt. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. the first. That was, uh, no, there was no. there was one previous that I wasn't really involved in. There was one that I found out way later um, when she was living in a car. Uh, there was, that was one. And then who, there's probably more that I don't know of. But, um, and then, uh, the second year of college, my second year of college, I I wanted always wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. That was my dream. And so at Penn State, it was one of the best years ever. I loved that year. I love Penn State. And I, but I was like, I really want to be on SNL. I gotta go to I gotta move to New York. I gotta transfer schools because I can intern at SNL, and that is a surefire way for them to know who I am without me having to you know figure out how do I get on the cast. That that there is a way. There's an in. So I moved to New York, and my mom was so worried about me. New York's so dangerous. There's so much crime. There's so much, oh my God, I'm so scared for you. She wanted to move me in with my dad. And I was like, last time that didn't really go well. So I'm going to say probably not the best idea. And she insisted. And my dad was like, just let her. Just let her. I'm like, okay, fine. And they moved me in and we're in my little dorm room. And it's the dorm room for all, only transfer students. So it was all transfer kids. And I was so nervous. New York's terrifying um and i was very i was very scared but i was like you just gotta fucking suck it up and do it and you gotta get over it and um my parents moved me in my mom started to get in a sour mood she started to pick a fight with my dad started screaming at my dad in the dorm room hallway in front of everybody and my dad was just kind of like okay and she goes you know what Ed? we're fine i'll fucking walk back to fill a fucking delphia and she just walks out of my dorm room and walks away and i was like are you and that's when i was like all right, fool me once, shame on me. But, but fool me twice, you're a bitch. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, and so I that was the first moment where I really got mad at her. It was the and second you're an time adult she did at that. this point. You're yeah, college. 19. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so, and then she was rambling about, am I jump in front of a bus? And I was like, oh my God. And I, and I honestly, at that point, I was like, try not to slip on the curb. Exactly. <laughs> But it's this weird dichotomy, man. When you have a when you have a mentally ill parent, you you feel so guilty and bad saying anything bad about them. Like you feel like you have to protect their reputation, but really you're protecting yourself That's right. from their reputation. That's right. So it's wild. It's wild what it does to you. I'm learning in uh this EMDR therapy, my second round. Did mm. I say it right? Yeah. Sometimes I mess up and say EDM. Yeah. It's yeah. EMDR. <laughs> yeah. But it's not your relationship to the person or the thing, it's your relationship to the relationship. The of memory. That thing. That's yeah, right. The memory. That's exactly it. Yep. It's not like you're still mad at somebody from 20 years ago. Well, it's not, not today. It's your relation, your, yes, yeah. your relationship to the memory. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know this is not on the list, but I feel like I can replace one because this is a really interesting sell it. one. Tell it. I said sell it. Sell it. Uh, my mom was adopted. Okay. Uh, when she was, and she, uh, by a lovely couple, um, when she was about three, 
she have she had siblings. Them? Yeah, yeah. My, my Not her biological. Her biological mom killed herself because uh, she tried to kill all the kids. She had a lot of siblings. Whoa. Well, um, she killed herself while the kids were like in the house. And so the state took my mom and siblings and they got adopted. Uh, and so because of that, we didn't know much about her health history. Uh, and some of the relatives were, mo- they were mostly passed away. And so I got my mom. I do, I do a bit about this in the specials, full disclosure. But <laughs> the story's crazy. I got my mom a 23 Me kit for Christmas one year. Her birthday's on Christmas. Christmas is always a big deal in our house. And um, I got her a 23 Me kit. I thought, because I, I was really excited. I'm like, oh, we can actually get some actual information about your background. And she she just didn't seem to care, which I thought was weird. Because usually she's like, pretends to care even if she doesn't with a present I give her. She's oh my God, thank you. She always puts on a show. Um, she didn't put on a show with that one. And I was like, that's strange. And so, um, it made me it, like she kind of tossed it to the side. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll I'll just do the kit. You don't have to do it. I'll do it. I don't care because she seemed so hesitant. And uh, and I did it. I did the kit and I um, got the results back. And I, I uh, it said you were 51 percent Ashkenazi Jewish. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, mom, you're Jewish. Like because dad, my dad was um, English and German and something, uh, but not Jewish. And I was like, obviously dad's not Jewish. So you're Jewish mom. That means I'm really Jewish if the mom's Jewish. And she was like, and I remember she was like, oh, cool. I'm like, do you hate Jews? What? What's going on? And um, I thought it was cool. And so, uh, and there's a couple health things that I learned. And and then uh, you download the 21 Me app. And then uh, a couple months into having the app, I started getting messages from people saying that they were my half sibling. And I was like, so wh- why? Because now your information is in the system, and those right. people can see so you. DNA matches. Okay. So you can you can you okay. can you can opt in to say if there's anybody that fits Got your it. DNA has a DNA match with you, do you want them to be able to contact you and vice versa on the app? And I was like, yeah, because if we find um, a relative of my mom's, I guess um, that would be great, and that's like a really surefire way. Your DNA just gets compared with all these other DNA, so it's like really efficient. And so I started getting these messages from DNA relatives, and I was like, oh, cool. But they said that one of the one woman was like, oh, we're half siblings. Um, uh, we have the same dad, but I was raised by him. So if you have any like questions about his health history and stuff, let me know, because I you know grew up with him. And I was like, what? And I was like that. I was like, oh, OK, that's that's cool. I don't really know what you're talking about. And I was texting my brother about it. And I was like, that's so weird. Do you think like because um, my dad has a brother. So I'm like, do you think my our uncle donated sperm and maybe because it's my dad's brother that like something like that because the other message was like oh are you a sperm donor baby too um we're half siblings like that's so cool and i was like what the fuck is happening i was getting all these messages and i was very confused so i called my mom and i was you know comics when something weird potentially happens to you you post about you make a joke about it right so i was i was putting these screenshots on my instagram stories of like oh i think i'm about to find out my family's not my family (laughs) and um and I was texting with my brother and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, I'm going to call my mom. But I filmed it. I have a vi- I, fil- I took my iPad out and I filmed it because I was like, I'm about to find out that um, I'm the mailman's kid, which my brother coincidentally had been saying to me my whole life because I don't look like anybody in my family. He had. Huh? He always said that. But he was jo- we joked around with each other. Like we teased each other like siblings. So I didn't think anything of it. And uh, I called my mom up and I was like, hey, mom, there. Um, so that 23 Me kit that I got, I'm getting all these messages from people saying that they're my half sibling and that. That I was a sperm, like there was a sperm donor. That's, I was like, dad's my, dad's my biological father, right? And she was like, ooh, actually, he's not. What? I did not expect you to say that shit. He's not. Um, I never thought I would ever be telling you this. I never thought this would get out. Uh, we, your dad had testicular cancer. Uh, I really wanted a second kid. She, I mean, she's obviously crying when she's saying this, you know, th- through the tears and the... <gasps> um, so please imagine that. Uh, we wanted a second kid. I wanted one so badly. And uh, his sperm wasn't good because of the cancer. And so I I asked him, you know, can we get a donor? And he goes, only if she never know, Only if the baby never knows. And she goes, okay, sure. I don't care. And she, my mom was like, I've tried to talk to your dad about it a couple times. And he very vehemently said, nope, we're not telling her. And then you got me that 23 Me kit. And I was like, ooh, she gonna know. And now you know. And I was like, wow, okay. I'm gonna go, but I'll talk to you later. And she was like, don't tell your brother. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, and she like wanted me to keep it this big secret. She's like, don't tell your dad yet. I'll tell your dad. She's crying and crying. I'm like, okay. okay. And that... 
That took me. Th- that took three years to sink in. I. I mean, I couldn't. I don't know if that would ever fucking sink in. You live your whole life a certain way only to find out not that you have these other siblings because of a past relationship that your dad might have had or right. a little oops from a side chick or even right. mom, what, yeah. these, these cars at Virginia right. Beach might have, right. you know, nothing. Nothing. No. It's that but, your dad isn't your dad. Yeah. But with biologically. the life, but with the life I'd lived up until that point, I was fucking negotiating with white trash toothless fucks over shit I got from the trash while my mom was in a depression coma in the van. I'm like, this fits with how my life has been going. Do you well now I have a million questions. So do you know who the man is? Your yeah. biological father. He's, he he ended up taking his own life. He doesn't. He's Holy not here shit! Are yeah. you kidding me? So suicide even on that fucking thing too. Yeah. yeah. He was a doctor. Yeah. Uh. Uh. But it it was. I don't. I don't know that he. Had, I don't know that he had clinical depression. Um. He seemed like a really sweet guy. Was, There's was a lot of articles about him that I found that like really. I'm like, wow, this guy seems like a really kind person. He was a doctor in in Philadelphia. So um, real quick, is your brother's father? He's your- a whole one. He's that is his biological dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's real. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's real. He's how a real many one. siblings have you found that you have that I'm you up didn't to about know? nineteen? No. Yeah. Nineteen. How many? Because when he was a med student, so uh, You're I just guess dropping loads at the damn yeah, thing. When You're I was not at Penn supposed State, to do that. You know? When I was at Penn State, though, I donated my de- donated my blood plasma every weekend because it was forty five bucks cash, and mm-hmm. I was like, gonna take this cash and I'm gonna go uh, get a freshman or get a, a sophomore to buy me beer. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my spending money was donating plasma. So if all you had to do was jerk off into a tube, I'd do that all damn day. Well, I tried to do that when I was in college as well, but they told me that you're only allowed to you're supposed to only be allowed to do two um donations in a certain mile radius because That's a nice rule. Although it's not probable, it is possible that those two siblings could especially if they stay in the area, could meet. Yeah, what if they at, fuck? Right, unbeknown to them, they're a lot fucking of look having. <laughs> yeah, they're having inbred babies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. we had a we had a girl come on the Patreon who had just gone through this too and found out that her father was he was going he went every week for, I think she said ten years and I said that could be five hundred and twenty siblings and since that show she had connected with like probably have you have you said what 19 19 and I met the 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 one that was raised by him I met with Corinne at RuPaul's Drag Con I was, I was dressed as a drag queen I met her and her <laughs> wife and her son and I was like hi <laughs> I'm your sister <laughs> nice to meet you I'm like in drag I'm like uh, hi this is weird huh I don't really look like you I'm sorry <laughs> I don't look like the dad I don't look like her I'm like I don't look like anybody <laughs> this is the honey deal with ryan <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so when do you have the conversation with your dad <sighs> a couple months after that months you waited that long my mom made me because she hadn't told him yet she, yeah she just didn't know she didn't want to she didn't she had but to... why didn't you just say fuck everyone now i want this conversation you're still trying to be a good daughter even then yeah All right. So mom tells dad first, heads up. Your daughter knows what's, well. Yep. The girl you've been telling your da- is your daughter. Is, yeah. Which but is, she's you, my dad. Yes, he is I my dad. Tell you. And I he mean, loved me like I was his kid. So. Earlier you mentioned cutting him, your parents off. So I wasn't sure if you did feel that way. But this is the no, man I, who's I, raised. This is your yeah, dad. I respected him more. I, I right. honestly, but, but, that's, but that's also, it's how I react to things. So I I don't even consider any negative aspect of of. Or, or or a way I would be uh, I'm disrespected if if I'm being I don't consider how I'm being treated in any situation uh, historically, and so uh, in this situation because I was always like mom 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 you you first when we had this con- when my mom talked to me I'm like are you okay this must be hard for you wow you kept the secret from me for a while ooh that's a lot of stress and like I was just concerned with her I didn't even think. Uh, I've been fucking putting the wrong health history on my medical forms for my whole yeah, life. Yeah, you know, it's big difference as we know. get older, for sure. Yeah, and it's only it's uh, there's nothing to be ashamed about, but there it, it, the only shame is that it was a secret. Don't keep a fucking secret. That's a huge secret that you kept from me. That was that's for how a lot. many years? When did you? How thirty three? Thirty three. Oh no, I found out. I was thirty one when I found out. God. Yeah. Man, you don't see that fucking coming, do you? Nope. What nope. a day. But when it did, I was like. Yeah, that makes Not sense. Not surprised. Yeah, because just weird shit happens to me all the time. 
of that uh, of a similar nature. So how did your dad take it? Was he emotional? Was he like apologetic or was he defiant? How was he? I knew that he he's not an he it's hard to talk to him about things, about serious well, you stuff. You only heard him cry once. Yeah. I'm curious if this is the second nope. time. Wow, really? No, uh, but I but I was comforting him. So I was like, "Hey, and I and I meant I really didn't mean this part, but I was like, you know, I really I respect your decision. I understand why you didn't want to tell me. And I really appreciate that you raised me as if I was biologically yours. Um, yeah. So I was like, thank you for having me. Okay, good night. <laughs> like that was a, that was a conversation. Um, but yeah, that was a wild one. That was uh so, that was a wild one. But so the cutting off part yeah, finally me. comes where um basically my whole life, every boyfriend I've ever had and every close friend I've ever had has always uh remarked on how odd of a relationship I have with my parents. I'll drop anything that if they call, I drop whatever I'm doing to to answer the phone. Um they would have weird rules on me that I didn't un- understand at the time. I should have been like Hey, I'm a grown up and I'm not doing that with I all due respect. I struggle boundaries for myself too. I never set a boundary with them. There's yeah. no boundaries. Um and uh every friend I've ever had was like your parents are weird to you. And I was like, "No, they're not." And I I sometimes I would get offended when a friend would say that cuz I'm like, "Don't you say anything bad about my parents." Like I would protect them like I was a knight and they were the king and queen. And um and then I read a book called you're not crazy, it's your mother. And I learned about narcissistic personality disorder. And I I, I downloaded the audiobook of this. And I read it when I was on the road. I was doing a weekend solo, a solo weekend by myself on the road. And I downloaded it and I listened to all eight hours. I didn't sleep because it was, it was, it, it, it described things that I was like, oh, that is fucked up. Okay. The suicide attempts, you know. She had a lot of them. She didn't do it. She wasn't really good at it. She didn't. I, um, that made me think that wasn't the goal. The timing of her suicide attempts was always when I was about to go off into the world. And I was like, keep you here. Keep you it. are a narcissist. Yeah. That is what everything Very revolves around too, you. Yeah. Every And you have me, right? I, I'm a, you might as well have me on a fucking leash. Everything is surrounding you. Your emotions are paramount. Whatever I'm going through doesn't fucking matter. It's how you're feeling or how I make you feel. That's the only thing that matters. And they fucking fed into that shit. There's this thing that I learned called triangulation where you pit, you're pit, you pitted against another family member, whether it's a sibling or a parent or whatever. Uh, everything that this book described were, were, were basically a list of all the inappropriate, emotionally manipulative, abusive things my parents have done, both of them. Uh, and when we started making money, uh, Corinne and I, uh, like the podcast got really successful and we got, I remember like the first big deposit from the comp, like that went into my bank account. I like, I still have the ATM receipt cause I was like, I just felt like a billionaire, um, because we, Corinne and I were so broke in New York for, for most of our time there, uh, up until that point. Uh, the first big check I got, uh, my parents were like, oh, we're going to move to Florida cause it's cheaper or whatever. And they're like, or. We can move to New Jersey if you'd be interested in buying a house with us. And I was like, okay. I got all that money, wired it right to my dad the next day. And I was no, like, all God of it. Damn it. All of it. All of it. I didn't pay taxes on that. Oh, God. Six figures. I had to pay taxes on that. I gave all of it to them. And then I had to, I was, I'm like, oh my God. After I read this book, I, and I learned they train you to bow down to them, essentially. Whether they're doing it consciously or subconsciously, it, in my opinion, it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, but boy, oh boy, have I gotten tricked my whole life. What like, did they do with that money? Uh, we bought the house. We, okay. bought, we have a house. Right. It is my you, asset. I was over here so with it's anxiety. Fine. Okay. So we got an LLC. We split the house. So the house is 50% mine. So it's an asset. So okay. it wasn't, I didn't like, you know, just give it to them. Uh, thank God. But what made, what was the line where you cut them off? And was it a separate thing? Or were you on like, all right, so today's my mom, the day. My mom Both was, of you can. Yeah. Uh, my mom, one day we were out on the porch on the beach house. Um, she came out with her laptop and she was telling me how Black Lives Matter. Uh, you don't know where the money is going. And because I had been marching. It was quarantine, uh, but I had been marching. And she was so worried and so concerned. And she was like, "This, you can't trust Black Lives Matter. I'm like, yes, I can. I can't trust you, bitch. I didn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I wanted to. At least I thought it. I was like, ooh, naughty. Um, but I – and I remember I, I – I felt the anger and the rage well up in me like I always had. And instead of – I either would suppress it or I would scream at them and they would go, oh, 
how can you? If, when I would get mad at them for very just reasons, they would go, are you okay? What what's wrong with you? Oh my, I'm worried about you. Are you addicted to drugs, Christina? And I'm like, I'm not. Oh my god! Like they made me so crazy. So that night, she came out of the porch. I just fucking left. I didn't even say anything. You pulled a mom. I you left. pulled a mom yeah, on her. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And I was driving away, and I'm like, yeah. Fuck you. How do you think about that? I'm like, oh, I hope she's not mad at me. Like, <laughs> and um, and then um, this is still before I read that book. Um, uh, quarantine was happening. Uh, mom got Fox News kidnapped both my parents. Uh, they allowed it, but um, you know, it, I kind of lost them to Facebook and Fox News, and um. There was a moment where my mom kept emailing me and texting me, and I stopped responding, which was on like on, out of character for me. And so she would get very angry with me. And then really? she was like, I think you're addicted to drugs and your happiness is fake. And then I'm like, you're telling me how I'm doing? Instead of asking, how are you doing? You don't care about me. I'm like, also, you don't really fucking like me that much. You don't. You don't. You're not nice to me. You're not nice to me. You criticize me. Everything I do is wrong. Why do you, why, I don't want to hang out. I never, I don't really want to see you again. And so I started pulling away from her without like really drawing a hard line in the sand yet. Um, and she was so up, she was so devastated that I was, um, I was, that New York City was being uh, filled with criminals with the pandemic and that I was addicted to well, God knows what drug and and I, and, I, and I wasn't getting my work done. She was just making all this shit up. And, um, and she's like, I need to, I want to come down and talk to you. And I was like, no, you're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um, four days later, 9 a.m., I'm in bed, and I my buzzer rings. And I was like, what? And then I look up at my phone, and I have eight missed calls. And I'm like, okay. My mom's at my fucking apartment. She drove to New York City. She did. She's at my fucking apartment, buzzing the buzzer. And it, the, the buzzer I lived in at the time, the building was kind of wonky, and the buzzer was extremely loud, very jarring. I hated when people buzzed. Um... She's buzzing, and I lo I finally lost my mind. Finally. I was screaming. I was throwing shit. I was like, I'm going to – and I call my brother, call my therapist. Call I call my dad, and I was like, what the fuck? I told her not to come, and I told you to tell her not to come. And she came, and she goes, he goes, well, go out there and talk to her. I'm like, N no. What? <laughs> no. Are you – All right, what, go, the what the hell fuck are you, you talking about? I hate yeah, you. Seriously. What? And then I go, wait. Can I block them on my phone? Is that legal? Like that's how that's how that's how Munchausen-y it had gotten. I just asked my therapist yesterday, is that wrong? I, I'm having a trouble with the fact that they're blood. Yeah. Is it wrong? And she's like, it's not wrong. No. You're not wrong. And I'm like, I need to make better boundaries for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because you'll go insane. Uh, and I blocked them. I didn't let her you in. Did. I didn't let her inside. I didn't let Good. her in my building. It was pouring rain. She has tremors. Well, so of that she Walmart. shakes. She's like shakes a lot. So she's outside in the cold. It's raining. And she's like, let me in. And I'm like, no. And I and I Pull that draw buzzer. the curtain. I block them. And I was like, I don't know how you're going to get home. Because I was always so worried about them. Like, oh, you get home. And I was like, nope. We're done. Fuck yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Well, look, and then I, I cried, I cried, cried for two years. <laughs> years. <laughs> I, don't, I hate to cut it here, but you got to get the hell out of here. You really do. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. said two years. Yeah, two years. <laughs> go two and years. get another one, girl. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure for Adam Carolla, I'm not mascara tears because he's going to go, oh. All right, real quick. You have to go. Yeah. Advice you would give to your 16-year-old self, especially <laughs> after this shit. You're not crazy. It's your mother. <laughs> that's what I would have given. Yeah. Boundaries, too, I really feel like. Yeah. I would say that to my own self, and that's one I hadn't thought of before. Yeah, you need boundaries for yeah. yourself. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, will you please promote everything one more time? Yeah, our special day is out on YouTube. Uh, it's a debut comedy special of myself and Corinne Fisher. YouTube.com slash guys we fucked without the you and fucked. Uh, I'm at Christina Hutch on all platforms. Um, I'm going to be in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, London, yeah. uh, Ireland, and Miami. ChristinaHutchinson.com. All right. Thank you so much. As always, yeah. Ryan Sickler on all social media. RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.